I have a guest commentator with me for the rest of the program to offer her perspective on some of the talking points and what you might have heard on the show today. And the journalist, political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku is here. Great to see you again. Great to see you too. You, you heard Paul Alaje earlier. He's an economist. He owns a rice mill and he says the rice mill is at risk of going under because of rising diesel costs. Very passionate um, and clearly, you know, very expressive of the things that are happening um, to him. What, what, what do you make of all that? I mean, it was a brilliant conversation for the mm. two guests, actually. Um, it, Paul, as usual, was firing from all cylinders. Very direct, um, informed, and engaging. Mm. And the staggering information for me that I took away is that uh, the cost of diesel was 200 naira in 2021 and now in 2023 just over two years it's over uh, 1000 naira. staggering yes it's staggering and it's almost overwhelming to think about what these guys are going through um so it definitely means that something needs to be done about it right um he mentioned local production yes we definitely need to increase or start local production and i was wondering I, I know about the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline, that is to start from Wari through Niger, um, through Algeria to Europe, mm. shipping gas to Europe. And mm. I wonder if we're going to be doing that, why, why are we not even using optimally gas in our country mm. if we have it in abundance? Absolutely. Gases will be an alternative people. energy source. You have to diversify yeah. the energy source. And obviously, beyond... Um, the, the sort of diesel and you know and so on i mean in terms of the impact on manufacturers and businesses you know you, you've got to combine that with a foreign exchange crisis because they import virtually everything they use to make their their products and the fact that the transportation of goods using trailers and trucks and all the rest of it all affected by diesel costs um and, you know, it's, it's, it's it, 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 all that having an impact on a very fragile economy and, and on the economic outlook going forward. Yeah, that's right. So um, when you think about it again, um, the All Progressive Congress, which is the ruling party, must be having an Oppenheimer moment. If they're not having that, then something is seriously long, wrong. Um, due to the fact that they have been in power nine, nine years, mm. eight years of Buhari, this is the ninth year, and it has been bad news all round. Everyone can see it. They are not catching their breath. And it, it doesn't look like they have um, an official policy that is rolled out, you know, with time properly, collabor collaboratively to, you know, work on the economy. Mm. Everything seems dis disjointed and everyone is doing whatever they want to do. And that dovetails into what Dr. Peter Said was talking about when he talked about economic diplomacy. Yes, it's good to go out there, do economic diplomacy, but you have to do your work at home. And he mentioned countries like Japan, China. Mm. And what I wanted to say about that is that China wasn't playing at all. For a very long time, they were growing at a rate of at least 10% or more, for a very long time. Mm. How, many year, how, how, how many percentage have you been growing for the last eight years, you know, or nine years in Nigeria? So that's something think, to think about. And mm. of course, also, China is very disciplined. Very. They are not joking with the rule of law. They have strong uh, values, strong uh, governance structures, um, very little primitive accumulation by politicians do you want to compare that with nigerian politicians and government officials who most times seem to be more interested about the kind of expensive vehicles they're going to be driving the kind of expensive homes they have to uh, live in and how much they have to travel and collect extra code there's mm. so much on seriousness and you see that impacting on the economy and other parts of the country. And so certainly it also impacts on the perception of people abroad. And uh, Dr. Peter Said was talking about the president and his vice as the most traveled in their first 100 days in office since 1999. Um, and we were trying to, he was trying to assess the value of that massive diplomatic shuttle, um, what it was aiming to achieve. And he was making the argument that you've got to do that hand in hand with 
domestic development and creating the enabling environment to attract foreign uh, investment. What, what do you think of that? Well, I heard him say that, but you don't need to chase around investment. When your house is good and in order, mm -hmm. they will chase you, they will come. And it seems like at the moment, Nigeria is a bit lost um, at the global stage. And there is a reason for that. I mean, there are a couple of things that you need to do. If you want to have that clout globally, you have to have a combination of economic, uh, political, military, and soft power capabilities mm. in order to build that influence. And it takes decades of careful planning, of consistent effort, of governance, good and effective governance to you know, create that influence, create that visage. It really takes time. I think we've fallen off you know, for, for the past couple of years. And that is why uh, you know, a group like BRICS did not even mention Nigeria or talk to them. You know, people say it's not important. They invited Iran, Ethiopia, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, UAE. And people say it doesn't matter. It matters. Why does it matter? We are the biggest uh, economy. Well, we, we interchange with South Africa, but we have a very big economy in Africa. We are the largest in terms of population. In the global south, we should have a solid voice. And so you have this emerging group that covers a lot of the global south and will be e even bigger. I mean, um, already 40% of the world population is in BRICS, and a quarter of the global economy is under the BRICS, and it will grow. Why would Nigeria not be on the table yes. inviting other people? You That's actually made, you, you, you made a very good point when you talked about one of the key things being consistency, which is what the Chinese have done. Because if you go back to the days of President Obasanjo, I mean, the Nigerian economy was growing really fast and the policies and everything were very conducive to foreign direct investment and you had a lot of it coming in. And at that point, the discussion being had very, very seriously was that BRICS was going to become Brinks and the end there was Nigeria. But obviously that conversation is off the table. Yes. Very correct. So during Obasanjo, we were growing at the rate of more than 7%. Mm. And if we had continued, we would have been in another spot now. But when you see politicians think it's a joke, okay, the APC says we want power. You have power, you're not prepared for it. You're not doing nothing with it. Instead, you've, you, you sort of brought the country to its knees. And yes, uh, you know, Dr. Peter Said says, have patience. What kind of patience are you talking about? The world is moving. People are suffering. So what is going on with the fuel price now is causing or deepening inequality, income inequality, because you see that people's uh, low income people especially spend a significant uh, portion of their income on transportation and energy costs. Electricity tariff is not cheap at all. And then this might lead to social unrest. Labor is already talking about um, the strike they're going to have next week. This could eventually lead to more unrest. Mm. And then, of course, it reduces um, economic growth. When it is very expensive to do business, people have to lay off workers. That means you have more problems. And, of course, you have the problem of inflation as well. Because it's very expensive to produce anything, they don't, then transfer the cost, of, uh, the cost on the consumers. That right. means the prices of goods are you know, going higher and higher. So it's a lot to tackle. Right. So governance is not a joke. If you're going to be the president or you're going to be the ruling party, do the work. Right. Buckle down. Well, let, let's hope that, as uh, Dr. Dakuku Peter Said pointed out, that uh, now that you've got an economic team in place, that in the next few weeks to a month, they'll roll out a strategy and begin to implement it. I want to thank you very much indeed, Dr. Constance Ikoku. She's a journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.